the key. The key is success will lead to satisfaction. And yet throughout scripture, we see that those things are so fleeting. Those things are by definition fickle. That what is what really brings true satisfaction. It's an interesting time, right? Because we're here watching right now live or in the middle of essentially, I know it's not completely accurate for the global quarantine. And it's probably caused us all a bit of pause to say, teachers and communicators and even political figures to be like, here's seven keys to a successful career. Um, because we now know, hey, that's, that, that, that's not what brings satisfaction. To be honest, my, my heart immediately goes to millions of people, maybe I could take it to, to billions, who are wondering if their job will still be there. Will I even have a career? And yet, so much of what we build our satisfaction on is something that could be over. In the matter of in the matter of a few days, in the midst of a pandemic, um, that is. This message has now been manifest through Jesus, comma, Jesus, who is abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. He has abolished death. Let me tell you, let me explain what I mean. Jesus, when I say Jesus is enough for satisfaction, I also believe what I'm saying is Jesus is enough for death. In the world that I live in, the Western the next life he knows he's going to die and what is the words he writes he says i got confidence jesus has abolished death now you're thinking abolished death what do you mean we're still dying yeah but he has taken away the sting he's taken mm -hmm. away literally all the effects of death all the fear the torment the horror that comes around death Death is when we spend eternity on a new heavens and a new earth where there will be no disease, there will be no pain, there will be no crying, there will be no problems, there will be, it will be 
perfection. And that is where we're headed. In the meantime, we make the most of the moments and minutes we have on earth. And that, and ultimately that alone, brings us true contentment. know he's about to die listen to these words it says in verse 11 i know i was appointed a preacher i was an appoint i was appointed a leader of leaders and that's one of the reasons he says that i'm kind of going through some problems here it's one of the reasons i'm in rome in prison they're going to cut my head off because i'm a preacher but he says i'm not embarrassed i'm not ashamed i'm convinced listen to this that he's able to guard until the day that has been entrusted to me, until the day that I slip into eternity, Paul says, I'm convinced. I'm convinced. One translation says, Paul's words would be translated this way. I couldn't be more sure. Just couldn't be more sure. That's all. Just couldn't be more sure. And I read that a couple of days ago in preparation for the, this moment, and I thought, that wouldn't be a bad way to wake up in the middle of a pandemic. I couldn't be more sure. I mean, if you were in prison, if you knew they were going to cut your head off in a few days, I don't know if that's what I would write. I don't know if I would text a buddy and be like, text Justin and be like, couldn't be more sure. I mean, you could argue. Mm -hmm. Paul, you, you couldn't be more unsure. Your days are numbered. Your moments are minutes. That you, you're not going to live much longer. How, how can you be so...
They told us later throughout the corridors of history, he said he would come back. He said there was going to be a day he would return again. He would take us all home. In the meantime, we make the most of the minutes we have. I know whom I believe. I'm so over. I'm so disinterested in just the mere dissemination of concepts and principles and ideas and keys. We have an overwhelming inundation of principles, concepts, ideas, and steps, and, and things you should do. My brothers and sisters, we need a person. We need a whom to believe in. A whom to believe in. And whatever your political persuasion, my hope is not in the political system. My hope is in the God of the universe who has always been and always will be. He changes not. He doesn't. He is, the, he is love personified. He is truth personified. He's forgiveness personified. And he's always been that and will always be that. And our time's coming soon. We're going to go home. But like I said, in the meantime, we're going to remember whom we believe in the number two. And I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I promise. We're going to sing in a moment. I'm done. But number two, he knew who he was. Because he knew whom he believed. He knew who he was. I want you to hear his language. He goes, I know what I was called to. I know that God handpicked me. I know that I was called and chosen. I want you to hear that word appointed. He said, I was appointed. I started thinking the other day. You know, God's not thinking to himself, man, I don't know how we put Judah in 2020. He was not. He was supposed to be in the 1920. I didn't, I didn't wire him for 2020. No, 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 wait a minute. You were handpicked. You were handpicked to be a roommate with that person during this pandemic. You were handpicked to be dad to those kids. You were handpicked to be grandmother to those grandkids. You were handpicked to be the boss of that business that may not be there after this is all said and done. You were handpicked. You were handpicked to be mom and dad, or you were handpicked. all not sit around and act shocked that we're alive during these days and these decades and these minutes and these times. I'm here to declare that I was pre-wired before this all started to have the fortitude and the constitution to make it through this season and be somebody here who is still full of faith, hope, and love and the He takes what is meant for destruction, and by his own grace and goodness, he works it together for good. And I think back when my dad passed away 11 years ago, nothing about that felt good. Nothing about that felt right. Nothing about that felt fair or just. But over time, boy, the gratitude I have for having a dad, the gratitude I have for the minutes and moments I did have, my whole perspective has changed because of God. God is good, and all that he does is good. I want to remind you of Paul's words again. I couldn't be more sure. I mean, is it okay? I, I, I don't mean this in a braggadocious way, but I just couldn't be more sure. I couldn't be more sure in the middle of this global quarantine and this pandemic. I couldn't be more sure 
of God's saving power. I couldn't be more sure of how God satisfies my soul. I couldn't be more sure of the true lasting eternal security that God gives me, my wife, my kids, my friends, my family, and the church community I'm a part of. I believe that. I couldn't be more sure. God, we ask. offers this. I'm not welcoming you to a religion. I'm not asking you to subscribe to a dogma. In fact, some of you are smart enough to know, I know all of you are, that the, the term Christianity has been used for extraordinary abuse and injustice and manipulation and control. So instead of just saying, hey, welcome to a religion, I'm just inviting you to receive the person of Jesus. Um, and to make a decision today that you know whom you believe. His name is Jesus. world and if you would like to receive this free gift of forgiveness i'm going to ask you to raise your hand and i only do that because i believe when you respond on the outside to what's happening on the inside it makes it more real to you so i'm going to ask you to do it on the count of three you can close your eyes if that makes you more comfortable maybe to you and your wife and kids but let's have this moment just for just for a second you know who you are i'd like to receive decision in human history. You have just received immortality through the free gift of Jesus. He said, Judah, it can't be that easy. I know, I know. That's why it's so good. <laughs> All the work's been done. All you do is accept it and receive it. It's incredible. I love you, church home. Uh, I love you in the, the deepest part of my soul, if I could even say it like that. In this studio right now, I can literally sense the love of Jesus. I can
The darkness, my God, that is who you are. God, you're so good. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in my darkness, my God, that is who you are. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper. Good. In the morning I say, 
good. In the evening, I say you are good. that I would never drive you again. Yep. That happened like last week. Yeah. That's a true story. You can drive on long distances. Then. Yeah, she said around the town, city, life, you, you're done driving. That's how bad it is. Anyways, I'm sorry. That's I actually a, totally People think it. I exaggerate. I'm not exaggerating. No, I kind of lost track of that, but... <laughs> you guys did awesome. I know, God. I know, but I love you so, so much. much. So much. But, um, like, um, hey, but yeah, God's love, it really is unstoppable. It be to exactly where you're at. There is no limits. There's nothing that can keep any of us, not, not a virus, not anything that we have done can keep us from his love. And just feel that so strong. So strong. Really and good. thanks to the musicians, thanks Jordan and Ezra and Philip for being here. They've taken some, some effort to, to, to get to the studio today, so it means a lot. Hey, but if you responded to that prayer at the end, or if this is a newer um, experience for you, yeah. we want to let you know that this doesn't have to end here. This isn't for us. It's not just about putting putting on a show on Instagram Live or yeah. all of the outlets that you mentioned, <laughs> which we are not on. Um, but we're actually really passionate about building community and making sure that this isn't just a good feeling that is going to leave as soon as you click on to something else, yep. but we really believe that this is something for us to connect with each other, to take with us, and so that's really done through community, so we would love to invite you to join us on our Church Home app, it's totally free, we're not asking anything of you, but on there, there's Pastor Chat, you can talk with any of our staff pastors yep. anytime throughout the day, there's also prayer requests and um, prayers every day, uh, groups that are happening digitally to connect you with, and we really are committed to building a community that is real and genuine and leveraging whatever we need to build that community. So we'd yeah. love to invite you to join us there, and it's great. You're great. Um, this is, uh, 
unprecedented days, but at the same time is an opportunity for us to recognize what, what really matters and, and, that's, and that's being together and connected. And so we're, we're passionate about making that available to small church with a lot of people and, and getting on the app. And there's just so many things you can do in terms of engaging with people and hopefully getting content that, that'll help encourage you. Yeah. We need, we're I all need every day right content. now. I mean, I'm on Instagram <laughs> live multiple times a day. It's she, go, she, it she could cost me my marriage. It, it, it's, it's borderline. Justin, it he, could. It, when he gets on Instagram, like, he's so costing me my marriage, I'll tell you that much. House, not even my closet. But have you seen how upset Haley has gotten a few times? Oh, it's encouraged me so, so much. much. She's been, Thank you, Haley. There's not a, I was talking. There's not a single room I can get to in our house that I can get away from your voice. So... We'll see how I we did in the garage yesterday and did it. I still people heard up. you. You still heard me. Sweet, sweet, sweet. So we're working. We're, we're, we're working those. Being loud is who, who God made me to do. be. What? Always in the together is about a community. Yeah. It's a community we talk about giving. First of all, just really practically, it is generosity and just out of the kindness so where, and goodness yeah. of people's hearts so that we're life. able to do what we do. But specifically in this time. I know so much of the fear that we are facing isn't just around how is this virus going to affect me, right. it is how is the economy going to affect me. And I read this verse this week that this just, it just jumped out at me, and I just want to share it with you, not just to encourage you in your giving if you want to, there's never any pressure to give, it is always Ever. a free will choice, but also to encourage us, yeah. all of us around our finances. Listen to this verse, it's in Second Corinthians. Chapter 8, this is written by Paul, the same man who wrote the letter that Judah preached from earlier. It says this, this is Paul speaking, he says, Now friends, I want to report to you on the surprising and generous ways in which God is working on the churches in Macedonian province. So for now we can say the churches around the world. Yeah. Listen to what he says, he said, Fierce troubles came down on the people of these churches. Fierce troubles. Pushing them yeah. to their very limit. And as I read this, I was so encouraged, realizing we're not the only people to have experienced first fierce trials. Right. I know for us, this is the first time in our lifetime, in our generation that we're experiencing this, but we're not the first in the world. And as I read this, I thought, okay, what happened to these people? There are forerunners. They were the people of yeah. faith who went before us. What did they do, even specifically with their finances? In the when middle they of fierce. These fierce trials. Listen to this, it says, um, it says the trial exposed their true colors. They were incredibly happy though desperately poor. And when I read that, I thought so much of the reason we fight so much fear around our finances is we think our happiness is tied to our bank account. Or we think there's no way I could not have this much money in my bank account and still be happy. But yet these people, it says they were incredibly happy, though desperately poor. But then listen to what happens. The pressure triggered something totally unexpected an outpouring of pure and generous gifts. Wow. Also, I was there, I saw it for myself. They gave offerings of whatever they could, far more than they could afford for the privilege of helping other people. And as I read that, I thought, that's how our predecessors responded. Yeah. That's how I want to respond. I don't want to get afraid. I don't want to get stingy and isolated and think, what can I hoard? Throw the paper. I want to know, <laughs> what can I give? How can I be generous and not just out of that? Out of, out of everything that I have in my hands. So can I encourage us in a couple ways specifically for how we can be generous? First of all, if you're watching this and you're a part of a different church community, can I really encourage yeah. you to give to your home church? Maybe so they important. aren't meeting. Maybe it's literally going back and finding your checkbook and writing a check and sticking it in writing the mail. Who's <laughs> <It's> not? <laughs> maybe, your maybe your check has. Maybe your church has been. No, I don't know. I don't think church home does. But finding a way to continue. To get